Hi, my name is Stephen Marquis and I'm the founder of Piano Portals. Piano Portals exists primarily as a truly holistic approach to piano technique. That's the purpose of the Transform Technique online courses. But it also advocates a holistic approach to learning repertoire. Start Here, Don't Start Here is about how we go about learning a simple or not so simple piano piece. What are our top priorities and where do we go from there? This video issues an invitation. If you're practicing diligently and regularly, but still not seeing the results you seek, and if you're not experiencing exquisite and apparently effortless control over those holy grails of dynamic shaping, rhythmic evenness, phrasing, balance, cantabile playing, ornamentation, then why not try out these fresh priorities in your practice? I aim to learn from those most able, those who find things the easiest. Unfortunately, this may not always be musicians who are classically taught, but it could be innately coordinated children or players in many genres such as jazz or folk or rock who often attain an almost superhuman level of dexterity without ever laying their hands on a five finger exercise. My own 25 years of honest observations of such players are also inspired by those of my own American teacher Sophia Rossoff and of her teacher, the great pioneer that was Abby Whiteside. They're also inspired by common sense in all manner of other activities in our lives. I aim to address the whole body coordination from the outset at every stage. I aim to cultivate from the outset a deeply focused mindset. I aim to be sincerely emotionally engaged in every second of my practice. Without this, my body and mind just behave completely differently and I risk practicing a kind of coordination that bears little resemblance to real life fluent expressive playing. And I want all of my practice to be joyful, invigorating, efficient, and satisfying. I also aim to prioritise the essence of the activity that I'm engaged in, in this case music. Music is sound and particularly if we've been taught to practice from the outset in certain ways, it's possible to bypass the very central element of what we're doing altogether. So let's turn to the matter in hand, that of learning to play an unfamiliar piece of music from scratch. I've come to believe that there are three central elements to learning a simple piece of Baroque or classical music efficiently and enjoyably. Number one, I need to prioritise connecting deeply, sincerely, emotionally with the music from the very first moment that I get to know the very first phrase. And I need to maintain this deep connection throughout all my practice activities. Number two, I need to hear the two parts or voices or melodies, whatever you want to call them, in as much detail as possible and I need to keep track of these parts orally to as great an extent as possible. And number three, I need to feel and embody the rhythms of the piece in relation to the steady beat or the steady pulse. If these three things are happening harmoniously, then you can synchronize the hands and play the piece fluently and expressively. The only caveat is, of course, you need simultaneously to be cultivating what's required in your whole body technique to be able to play fluently and expressively with lovely, exquisite dynamic control and phrasing and timing and all the rest of it. But as I said, the Transform Technique courses from Piano Portals deal with that aspect of things. Here we're concerned with the process of learning. Where do we start and then where do we go on from there? With this in mind, I would not start in these places, working out the notes in vertical towers one by one with both parts together. Mm -hmm. 
learning bar by bar without reference to the musical phrases. working out what fingers you're going to use on each note when you eventually play the whole thing or working out how to reach the notes with your fingers or position your hands. I'm not going to go into this subject now, but if you were to explore the Transform Technique courses sincerely with an open mind over a period of time, you could see for yourself whether establishing a set fingering remains a priority for you, if indeed it already is. In any case, I certainly would not religiously stick to the editorial fingering, especially if, as in the case in my book, there's the completely unnecessary suggestion to change fingers on the first repeated note. And I wouldn't just get the notes first, or bash through the notes, or learn the notes first, or in any way play mechanically, without incorporating the three elements that I described before. Instead, I advocate using the acronym Let's Play. So first I would listen at least to a whole section of the music to get the music in your head and allow your body to respond and activate spontaneously. Then keep listening to every detail of every phrase as you get to know the music. Connect deeply, sincerely, emotionally with the whole and with each individual phrase as you get to know it. Start with the simplest element of the music, the timing, and get to know this in phrases and layers, in this case the main tune and the bass line. Bring your awareness to the various different rhythms that make up the piece. Now with rhythms where it's not immediately obvious where they fall in relation to the beat or the pulse, you've got to just spend a few seconds doing the maths first. You could mark in where the three pulses in that bar fall and then notice in which parts of those beats the rhythm occurs. Essentially all the notes are either on beat or off beat, they come with a pulse or in between pulses. So there's the steady pulse. So once you've found all the rhythms that comprise the music, then I would perform the rhythms of that music in as many creative ways as possible and embody them. Notice how they feel and start noticing, bringing your awareness to things like recurring motifs, repeated patterns and how the music falls into phrases. So you could tap the rhythm of the tune. I'm just noticing that that sort of falls into two halves, two phrases, and the second of those halves, the second phrase, involves two rhythmic patterns that are the same. And then the second system of music, the second half of the section, comprises the same rhythm in the first phrase, followed by a different ending. And it just so happens that in this particular piece, in this particular section, 
all the lower stave part does, the bass part, is to play on the pulse. So I don't really need to practice that rhythm independently. And then in slow motion, if necessary, I can do one phrase at a time where I drum the two parts together. And just notice how that feels. Imagine that I were to be in an 18th century court dancing to this music. And without doing anything unnatural or overemphasizing anything, just feel how the pulse and the rhythm fits within the meter of three beats to the bar. If you were to be dancing, and by all means do dance to it, if you were to be dancing, how does that sense of strong and weak beats relate to this music? How does that feel and sound? I always tell the children that I teach that music has only two components, the rhythm and the pitch. And congratulations, you've done half of it. You're essentially playing the music just without pitch. Essentially when it comes to getting to know the pitch, you simply want to put the sounds of these tunes, these melodies, in your mind's ear, such that you could lie on your bed or go for a walk and just imagine them, just play them in your head. Now if you're not already accustomed to taking the music off the page in this way, you may need more tools to grow in confidence in essentially playing more by ear, even if you continue to use the score as a guide. That's the purpose of the Piano Portal's Essentials of Playing by Ear course. But for now, singing is your best friend, and you don't have to be able to sing well or even precisely in tune. You don't actually need to sing out loud, although most people find that the easiest way in, but as long as you can keep track of those melodies, know them, know the sounds of them, and then follow them in real time, listen to them as you play. This does open the door to confident memorising, but that is your choice. You can continue to use the score as a guide forever, if you wish as long as it becomes more and more a cue to remembering the sounds of those melodic strands, rather than primarily reading and working them out every time you look at it. I would start by playing and or singing the scale on which the music's based, in this case D minor stroke F major, I don't believe you need a lot of theoretical knowledge to be able to know these pieces and enjoy playing them. However, it is useful to know that most start in one key and then in the middle travel to another key. That's part of the narrative within the music itself. Those that start in a minor, like this one does, tend to move to the relative major. That's the major with the same key signature. And this is part and parcel of bringing your awareness to and connecting with the intrinsic musical story. It's not a purely academic aspect. You could start just by noticing how some of the intervals in the particular scale sound. So for example, da, 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 da. that's the first notes of the scale. And if I go from there to there, that's what the fifth sounds like. The one to the five, one, two, three, da, da, and then one, two, three, four, da, da. And then after a very brief working out period for each phrase where you simply work out the notes, then I would start bringing your awareness to things like how does it sound? What's beautiful about it? Noticing gaps in pitch or intervals that are particularly striking. Just letting your ear be your guide and connecting with that music. Noticing things like recurring motifs or phrases that are similar but different.
it comes to synchronising the parts, that is where your ears are your best friend. If you're used to learning by placing your fingers or just through repetition alone, you might need some convincing that your ears are all you need, along with that feeling of the rhythm in your body. You can but suck it and see, try it out, and see whether focusing more on keeping track of these melodies in your mind or singing them out loud actually does the work of synchronising the parts for you. For me now, practising is the same as memorising. So essentially, I'm memorising the tunes by noticing all the things that I notice about them and their beauty, growing to know and love each phrase. And that's how I synchronise the hands and that's how I learn to play new music. But as I've said, you don't absolutely have to memorise it, especially if you've got a lot going on in your life, in your work. You don't have to put yourself under that pressure to memorise. You can continue to use the score as a cue if you so wish. So I would synchronise the parts in as many creative ways as you wish. And because I'm very experienced at singing as well as playing, I'm able to sing one part and tap or play the other. But you don't absolutely have to sing it out loud. You could sing it vaguely, but imagine it clearly in your mind's ear, or you could just imagine the music in your mind's ear. Only you can judge when it's ready to play the two melodies together. And I would do this one phrase at a time, fluently and expressively. And if it's not, return to some of the previous steps. Assembling the whole is a little bit like ripening a cheese or allowing a wine to breathe. Part of the process is returning to these activities on multiple occasions and giving them time to bed in. So please don't expect to go through all of these steps in one sitting, unless of course you're already experienced in these matters. So after all of this, some would say, well that's all well and good, but how does this actually help me to learn to read music more fluently and efficiently in real time? Well I believe those who are the most fluent readers are those who are most able to turn the symbols on the page into meaningful sounds in their minds incredibly quickly. When I look at this page, I see rhythms almost at a glance in relation to a pulse. I see melodies in relation to a scale. And because I'm well practiced in recognizing and hearing intervals, both out loud and in my mind, I can pretty much hear the melodies in my mind as I look at it. So if I'm reading fluently and musically, expressively, I'm essentially noticing all these components almost instantaneously and turning them into sounds in my imagination. If that seems out of reach in music of this level, then 
all I can recommend is that you keep habitually drawing your attention to these meaningful elements of the music in the hope that over time you'll start looking for them, noticing them and processing them more quickly and easily. At the end of the day we're not talking about an infinite mountain to climb. In common western scales there are only seven common intervals and you could argue, I don't know, maybe a dozen common rhythms in these kind of simple Baroque and classical pieces. I think we're all on a spectrum where some music we can work out almost immediately and internalise and embody almost at a glance, whereas other music takes us more time. For me, I can figure out and internalise this aria pretty much straight away, but complex romantic music, on the other hand, will take me much longer to assemble. For you, you may be somewhere else on the spectrum, so perhaps the music that you are able to figure out and internalise quickly and easily might be the, the kind of five note melodies that you find perhaps in the, the initial or grade one syllabuses of the main examination boards. Not that I particularly want to bring graded examinations into this. And perhaps this aria is the more complex music that will take you a little longer to internalise and grow to know and love. I have noticed that the more attention I pay to the elements of the Let's Play acronym in my practice, and the more I prioritise these things, the more quickly I am getting to know more complex music as well. And at the end of the day, you have to ask yourself, well, what's the alternative? Is it to doggedly pursue learning the music in vertical towers of notes, note by note or bar by bar, with no flow or meaningful engagement with the phrase-wise structure and narrative of the music? If there's no authentic response to the phrase-wise flow of the music, there's no alertness, uh, activation in your torso in particular, which means essentially there's no fluent expressive technique. And if you want to find out more about how Piano Pulters explores that side of things, please do check out the Transform Technique courses at pianoportals.com forward slash courses. All of this ultimately stems from my own journey of frustration to facility in piano playing in my 30s and 40s. I used to prioritise certain elements in my practice as a result of my classical training and I ground to a halt and I left music school disillusioned. Now having revised my entire conception of practice and embraced fresh fundamental priorities, I'm making my best progress. Thanks very much for journeying through this music in these ways with me. I hope it's given you some fresh ideas. And although these are not the core tools from Piano Portals, I hope it gives you at least a flavour of the vibe, the tone that Piano Portals invites you to explore. Please do be in touch with any queries or questions at all. You can contact me by email, stephen at pianoportals.com or via the contact form on the Piano Portals website. Do drop a comment below and please remember to like and subscribe.